Hi, this is Jeff Welch with This Tiny Empire, and I am back with my friend Solvay Pedersen. Hello, Solvay. Hi there. Solvay is a, a teacher, a, a professor, is that legit? I'm an instructor. An instructor, okay. Yeah, I want to get the vernacular right here. Uh, <laughs> at the University of Alaska Anchorage, and uh, she is also a, a life coach and somebody who I, uh, I think the world of and really value her insight. So we're going to talk today about saying no, which I guess also is about saying yes and what to say yes to or not to. Um, and there, there, are, uh, there are a bazillion things every day that we're sort of forced to either accept or reject, right? So, I mean, the, the way we entertain ourselves, the food we eat, the, the projects we do, the jobs we do, the relationships we engage in, I mean, those are all sort of at, at some level, there are yes or no questions as to what you're going to let in and what you're not going to let in. Um, and that can be tricky. I, I, for you, do you have a hard time saying no to, uh, to things that come up that uh, you, you might be interested in but may not have space for? Um, well, I love the way that you frame that, actually, just addressing everything. Because yeah. it's a really good point that everything in our lives, we're either saying yes or no or or maybe mm -hmm. let me think about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, yes or no, too. So I think that's a really great point. And I think I would consider myself in terms of saying yes or no. I was thinking, I think I'm a recovering overcommitter. <laughs> I like that. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Because um, I think it, being a person who cares about a lot of things in the world mm -hmm. and cares about a lot of people, I mean, care, I care about people in general and, and, and wants to be involved in my community, all of those things. It's, it's hard to, to say no sometimes. You, you, I think one often want, if, if you have those sorts of desires in your life, we want to say yes to everything mm -hmm. and be involved in everything. Yeah. And so I think that's quite the challenge um, to, to figure out what we're saying yes and what we're saying no to. How about you? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you're you involved in so much, it yeah. seems, like, in your life, and I so admire that. And, and, and do you have trouble saying no? Yes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> now, I don't know if I proved that I have trouble saying no just then. <laughs> um, so we had just a little technical blip there, but uh, we're back. But uh, yes, I am. I, I like that uh, that recovering overcommitter line. Uh, I definitely <laughs> fall into that category. I think I do it in cycles. I will um, say yes to a lot of things until I start to freak out, and then I will sort of figure out how to get that all under control. Uh, sometimes things get accomplished and they come off, and I will say no to a lot of things for a while, and then. After I feel like I'm not out of control anymore, I start to say yes to a lot of things again. So, yeah. um, so I, I think it, it definitely is is cyclical for me. Um, I said that about about creative ideas too. The the more space I have to have creative ideas, the less I have that's sort of weighing me down. The creative ideas just sort of show up, and and they result in a lot of things to do. And so then, as there are more things to do, that shifts, and I have no creative ideas anymore because there's so much just that has to be done, you know? And so those two things uh, often work, work hand in hand for me. Um, but, but I, I think, I think that yes is more negative than no, because yes excludes every other possibility, whereas no only excludes one possibility. Oh, yeah, you like what I did there? Yeah, I like so, that a lot. So if I commit to go, to, if I commit to have this conversation with you, I've effectively said no to everything else that could possibly happen at this time. But if I say, you know, Solve, I can't do it at 10 o'clock, uh, well, there are 10 million other things that might possibly happen at 10 o'clock. Now, of course, I, like I want to have this conversation with you, so yeah. it's, I'm, I'm going to say yes a lot more than I say no. But um, but I, I, I think part of it for me is, is a fear of missing an opportunity. Mm. Um, I, I don't want to say no to things that I think might, um, might be a good opportunity for me either to learn something or to connect with somebody that, that I'd like to know. Um, but that isn't always a good thing because um, you say yes to too many things and you start to let a lot of people down because you, you can't follow through. Yes. Um, so so what, do you, what do you think about this idea of, of opportunity, of um, that we, we maybe say yes too much because there are a lot of opportunities that we sure would like to be able to do? Mm. Does that yeah. uh, ring any bells for you? 
It does resonate. Yeah. I mean, in, in terms of wanting to, not wanting to miss an opportunity. And I love what you said earlier about um, when you say yes to something, you're you're not opening up the possibility for other things. And so I think, yeah, there's definitely a balance there. And, and actually, um, in terms of opportunity, I think for me, what's been important, because I can relate both to what you were saying about the it being a cyclical thing that you get involved in lots of things, you say le- yes to lots, and then you pull way back and then go back into saying yes to lots of things again. Um, I think two things that, that what that made me think of, um, one is this balance of being really passionate about things. I, I get uh, personally, I get really excited about things. I want to say yes to lots of things. And then I do. And my overwhelm ends up making me feel sort of cranky. And like, I'm not even excited about the yeah. things that I've said that I'm yeah. going to do, which is really unfortunate because if I'm strategic and say yes to the things that I'm really, truly excited about mm-hmm. or the opportunities that really get me going for whatever reason, if I'm careful about that, then I can bring all my energy and my creativity and they feel good. But I've also noticed in my life that I've had a tendency to say yes, because I don't want to miss any opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I say yes to all of these things. And then I'm cranky about all of them because I don't actually, I just, I don't have enough time or energy to give to them. So, so I would say that one thing that I've been thinking about in my life is really being clear on what my values are and what I want to be doing in a time, you know, what, what do I value and what is important to me in this moment? And that changes, right? I mean, sometimes, sometimes our values are in one, are in one area and they shift over time. So I think that fits with those cycles. Um, But the clearer I can be on what are my values right now, what are the consistent ones that always last with me, Mm -hmm. and what are the ones that are shifting a little bit, and then how am I almost being strategic about Mm -hmm. what I involve myself in based on that. I find that that's pretty important, um, at least in my my journey, (laughs) in my journey of saying yes. (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't know if you can read my notes from where you're at, but you're uh, you're definitely cribbing off my sheet, or maybe oh, I'm cribbing maybe. off your sheet. No, let's, I think let's, I have it on my notes. That. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, no, and I I, I was uh, in in thinking about this conversation, I, I thought about that a lot too. That that you really, um, when you can align the things that you engage in, the things that you agree with, uh, agree to do, with either what you are really passionate about or what you're really good at. Um, I think that's that's sort of this magical spot, and I, in a lot of cases, uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed by things that you've said yes to because maybe you don't want to miss an opportunity, or maybe you want to, you think it's going to um, uh, ingratiate you to somebody, like you know they they will they will appreciate you because of something you're doing for them, uh, but it's not something that you really care about. Uh, it can just just weigh you down, and. So I'm a big fan of of David Allen and this getting things done idea. I don't oh, know if you're yeah. familiar with him, but yeah. but one one amazing thing from from reading his book was this idea that we already have more stuff that we've agreed to than we can do in like six months. Like my list right now, if I look at all the stuff that I've agreed to do, if I did nothing else, if I said if I said yes to nothing else, I've got months of stuff to do. And yet, this afternoon, I'm going to say yes to new stuff. Like, I mean, it's just, it's inevitable. And so, are we completely self-deluded about the amount of time that we have to to yeah. spend of ourselves, you know? Yes. And it's amazing to me. I also noticed in myself that I underestimate time, how much time something will take. And yeah. this is the thing I'm working on, too. I think some people, you may be more realistic about this than I am but I think oh I can do all of this I can totally do all of this I got that and I don't know you know I'm working on that because usually things take a lot longer than I think they're going to so I'm trying to be really aware of that in my own life so I I, that's a really interesting point about what David Allen said and you know one other thought that I had um, and actually I think part I want to recognize that this conversation came up because a friend of mine actually said Solvay how do you say no because I have so much going on in my life and I want to figure out how to say no. And I was pretty flattered because I thought, well, I don't know that I'm the best person. (laughs) That's great. Let me think. And that was a while ago. So I'm glad that we're having this conversation. Another point that, that maybe some people struggle with, and I know I've struggled with, um, 
aside from the, ooh, this is a neat opportunity, I want to take it, is the guilt side of things. Mm. And like, I want to say yes, because, and, and even when it comes down, you know, we're talking about opportunities, but even like, you know, so-and-so has invited me to this event or over to their house or yeah. to coffee. And, you know, I value relationships, so I want to do this. But then, you know, sometimes I look at my week and I realize I've committed myself to so many different things because I haven't wanted to say no, because it, it makes me feel guilty. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and so I think, there's a lot of people that struggle with that yeah. as well. Have you figured out any way? Like, do you do you struggle with that guilt thing? I don't you... struggle with that guilt thing, but it's probably because I'm a horrible person, not because <laughs> not because I've figured it out. Uh, no, you know, I don't. I don't know what it is, but I I I mean, I'm sort of I'm a little bit famous for it in my family um, for for just eschewing that guilt. Um, okay. Uh, my mom jokes about it sometimes, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, I, th I think that there is valuable guilt, like when you have done something wrong and you're contrite and you, you recognize that you have erred and you, you feel um, sorry and you want to, you know, uh, express that. I think that that is a great, that's a great use of guilt. But I think that it just gets all tangled up in so many things uh, that we feel guilty about things that um, we don't need to feel guilty about. And I... I don't a lot of times. I mean, so my, my wife would be much more apt to agree to something because she felt like um, it was the polite thing to do, where, yeah. whereas I would be a little bit more like, um, I'd be a little bit more rigid about... Now, I value relationships too, and there are definitely oh, yeah. a handful of people that I would, I, would, I would have a harder time doing that, not because I felt guilty, but because that was something I really wanted to, to do with them, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, guilt is a tricky one and yeah. I don't, uh, and I, I'm probably not a good person to speak to it because I, I, I don't feel like I have a story that says, here's how I dealt with it and why I don't carry it. Okay. It just, um, I'm a little bit disaffected by it. Um, well, that's, that's a really interesting thing. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I mentioned that because it's definitely something that mm -hmm. I struggle with. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a lot of people do. I don't, I mean, that's not yeah. a, a narrow I, band I, at all. No, yeah. and I and I actually think you know just as a comment, and and this is a generalization, but I think it also may be um, more of a feminine trait as well. Um, that you know, and this is not associated with men or women, yeah. but that it's a feminine quality yeah. to feel sort of like we want to be nice and polite to everyone, and we want to do everything. Yeah. There's sort of like the super superwoman thing that people expect of women. Like mm -hmm. you, you should be a great mom and go to work and be great at work, and yeah. then go home and make dinner and do laundry and also be involved in your community. Yeah. And I don't know if men feel that in the same way. I'm speaking yeah. for myself. <laughs> um, but but I think that that that. Um, that is a struggle. And, and when you were talking about guilt, I was thinking, yes, there are some times where, you know, perhaps guilt, guilt is a helpful emotion, mm -hmm. but I've heard this saying, I don't know who said it originally, mm -hmm. but that guilt is often a wasted emotion. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that's a useful thing that I hold yeah. on to personally sometimes when I'm feeling bad because I said no to something. Um, and that, that, that guilt sort of creeps in. And I also think it goes back to not only values, but loving oneself mm -hmm. as much as we love, you know, I, I, yeah. in my practice in my work, in my teaching, in my life coaching, I care about kindness. I care about creating, helping people to create vibrant lives yeah. and being loving and peaceful in the world. Right. So I want people to be involved and be, and I want to support yeah. people and doing what they love. Um, but I think sometimes we lose ourselves in that. We get so caught up yeah. in whatever we're doing for everybody else that we forget that we also have to take care of ourselves. Sure. I think that's an important reminder yeah. for folks. Well, that, and, um, and your but, value to somebody else is derived from from how well you take care of yourself. You know, yeah. I mean, if, if you're constantly depleted and constantly frustrated and freaked out because you've you're doing too much, your value to those people has now diminished because now you're crabby when you're trying to help them and you're, you know, the things you've agreed to, you're not doing a good job on because there's just, there's too much. Yeah. No. And it's the worst feeling. I've mm -hmm. been there I've been there recently in my life. Yeah. That's why I say I'm recovering over committer. Sure. And I see so many, um, particularly, I just happen to be women, but particularly women that I know who, who are dealing with that too, where we've said, we'll do all these things and then we're miserable or we're cranky or mm -hmm. maybe miserable over dramatic but yeah. um, I think it's really something to to be aware of and to think about yeah like you're saying taking care of yourself and if you've taken care of yourself then you do have energy to take care of others yeah. but 
for me, that's an important part of thinking about whether I say yes or no to something. Mm -hmm. Not only what are my values, but am I making sure I have time for myself? Yeah. And that's not a selfish thing. No. It's not a selfish no. thing. Am I making sure that that's part of what I've worked into my week? Yeah. And I think there's, there's that line between self-care and selfish, you know, that sometimes it's those lines look a little blurry, but, um, and you have to be willing to do something that others might perceive as selfish because you know, it's what you need to do to make sure that you're, you're at your best, you know? Yeah. So. I think being honest with yourself and the people that are closest to you and yeah. your relationships, you know, those, those people, but really being honest with yourself about what, how you're taking care of yourself and sure. how you're involved. Yeah. Um, your point about, about knowing, um, Knowing your priorities, knowing uh, even your strengths, um, I, I will note that, that saying, saying no can be a, a way of demonstrating that you really know your priorities, that you know the direction, that you know what you're good at. Um, and it can actually be an asset in some ways. Uh, when you say yes to everything, um, you, you may seem like you're a little bit uh, willy-nilly. But yeah. when you say no tactically and you're like, no, you know, th that really doesn't fit in with, um, with either my, my strengths or my values, uh, you sort of demonstrate to the person that you're saying no to that you're really clear on, on what, you, what the value you have to add and that that might not be the best, the best fit. Mm, I um, love that. I love that. Um, you know, while you're saying that, I want to mention a resource too, and I, I, you've probably come across this. There's a book and a little measure quiz called Strengths Finder 2.0. Mm -hmm. Marcus you, Buckingham, that, is that right? I think it's Tom Rath. Oh who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they may work yeah. together? They yeah, may work. Together. Well, Buckingham uh, is a big strengths guy, but I think you're right. I think you're right. And that, yeah, that Buckingham may have written now. Discover your strengths. Yeah, which they're really Buckingham is a badass. Awesome. Well, Strengths Finder 2.0 is another one where one can do a quiz and then find out your top five strengths, I believe, based on this quiz. And if you okay. buy the book also, it tells you about Tom your Rath. strengths. Tom yeah. Rath. Yes. Tom Rath. Um, and, and that's a pretty cool resource for folks. I know for cool. me, it's been useful and I felt like it was fairly accurate in understanding some of my strengths and then, you know, when you're thinking about how you want to be involved and what you want to be involved in, the premise of this book is that we can really be superb at the things yeah. that we have strength in already. Sure. Not that we shouldn't do other things, but we can be really superb yeah. at these things. And so for people that might want to get a little more information and a little more self-awareness about their strengths, that could be a good resource. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, one thing that we talk about around my, my printing company, because we, uh, we want to take care of customers and sometimes we, we err on the side of over committing because we don't want to let anybody down. But one thing that we've, that we've come to uh, espouse is this idea that a no now is better than a no later, mm. which means that saying, saying we can't do something as fast as somebody wants it today is better than saying that when we've agreed to it and then can't come through with it because we've said yes to too many things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and maybe you can speak to that, but I, I think it's such a, such a credibility killer and a reputation killer when we agree to things because we don't want to let somebody down, but then we end up sort of letting ourselves down when we don't follow through because there really isn't the time to do it. And now we're the person who said yes, but didn't, didn't do it. I love that you said that. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's huge. I mean, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. We shouldn't I, say yes to things that we cannot do because yeah. it ends up being really frustrating for not only our reputation, yeah. for everyone around us. Yes, totally with you on so, that. So, so some takeaways that, that we can yeah. give people. Um, know yourself. Yes. Uh, know, know your strengths. Know your weaknesses. I think that's good, too. Understand the yeah. things that you're not going to be good. Know your um, values. Know your values. Um, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Develop a realistic sense of time. <laughs> What yeah. you can accomplish and what you can't accomplish. Recognize that guilt is often a wasted emotion. Yeah, good. And be strategic about opportunities. Good. Um, anything else? Gosh, um, this is some good. This is some good. I, I, yeah, I think it's good stuff too. Uh, yeah. And we could probably go on for a much longer period of time. But there uh, any yeah, other takeaways? And 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 yet, say yes to what you're passionate yeah. about. Say yeah. yes to the things that get you excited about life and yeah. feed the spirit. Those are the things to say yes to. Yeah, absolutely. The other stuff we can, it's, you know, we can say no sometimes too. And I love, I love, love, love what you said about um, 
if we say no, we may have and opened up lots of opportunities mm-hmm. for something else too. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Cool. Thank, Thank you, Solve. <laughs> I'll, I'll put your contact information on this, uh, this video on the screen and I'll include it in the, the write-up on the blog. Okay. Thank you so good. much. Yeah. Thank it's you. Always a pleasure.